Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, one of the things I read a lot about in the comments, and I'll go more about this into a second, is that Mac OS is much better at doing x86 emulation on Apple Silicon than Windows is on a Windows on Snapdragon processor. And I've replied many times in the comments saying, really, give me some proof of that. And of course, no one's ever replied with some proof. So I'm gonna provide the proof today. Is it or isn't it? Well, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the idea of this video is for me to show that Microsoft's x86 64-bit translation in its ARM version of Windows is just as good as Apple's for Apple Silicon and Mac OS. So why am I saying this? Well, having released several videos about uh, Windows on Snapdragon recently, particularly because of the Snapdragon X Elite, which we'll talk more about in a moment, people were asking in the comments, is it po technically possible for Windows to run on uh, AR64 instead of x86? Yes, of course it is, I would reply. Or another one, uh, is it possible for it to run? Someone else replied, yes, it, it is possible. Uh, and can it run emulation? Yes, it can run. Oh, I wonder what its performance is like. And these are just two examples. In fact, I've got loads of comments, other people, saying that Windows had rubbish x86 um, uh, emulation, others saying they didn't even know it existed, others saying they didn't know that Windows could run on uh, ARM processors and so on and so on. So I want to clear up all of that mess today and I've done some of my own testing so we can see what the actual real numbers are rather than just statements that people make without backing it up, without any data to back up what they're saying really. So two things you should know from the start. Windows runs on ARM64, AR64 today, on Windows 10 and on Windows 11. And I often point people to my review of the Surface Pro X because that is a Microsoft laptop with an ARM Qualcomm processor in it, rebadged under Microsoft. And Windows 11 has built in x86, that's 32-bit, and x86-64, so 64-bit emulation. So if you install a 64-bit app, just double click on it and it starts running. It doesn't matter that it's running on an ARM-based system. It runs the x86 app uh, in emulation and you wouldn't even know that you were that, that was happening. And that includes games as I show inside of my Surface Pro X uh, review that works for games as well. So why does this matter? Well, Microsoft has been pushing ARM as an alternative architecture to x86, that's Intel and MD, for years. Qualcomm is the biggest supporter of Windows on ARM with its Windows on Snapdragon devices because it pr mainly provides uh, with the ARM chips for all of these different Windows devices. Microsoft makes an ARM Snapdragon laptop, as I've mentioned, the Surface Pro X. Others, including Lenovo, HP, Samsung, and Acer also make them. For example, the Lenovo ThinkPad X13S. Now, with the release of the Snapdragon X Elite, there is a real competitor to Apple in the Windows market. So in case you didn't know, the Snapdragon X Elite is Qualcomm's new processor for Windows on Snapdragon laptops. It features Qualcomm's custom ARM architecture CPU, the Orion CPU, along with Qualcomm's Adreno GPU. It's competitive with Apple Silicon. It's better than the M1, better than the M2, and close to the performance of the M3. And I've got loads of videos here on this channel about that new processor and in the performance comparisons with Apple Silicon. So here's what it looks like. It's got 12 high performance cores that are clocked at 3.8 uh, gigahertz across the board and there are a couple of cores that actually boost even slightly higher. It's built on a four nanometer process. So we're getting a 12 core processor, all high performance cores, no efficiency cores and the performance, particularly in the multi-core uh, scores, multi-core performance is better than I say the M1 and the M2 and I've got videos that cover all of that. And this device, this processor will be in all kinds of devices. It scales across uh, devices without fans, so fanless devices like Apple do as well, all that to maybe bigger 17 inch devices with active cooling uh, and you know, and different ways of uh, setting them up, different types of devices. The thermal budget stretches across a whole range of different laptops. So, most Windows and Mac OS PC or laptop software was written for x86. 
And that changed when Apple released the M1 and migrated to the ARCH64 architecture, that's the ARM instruction set architecture, away from the Intel processors. So now in the Apple ecosystem, the developers had to start moving away from x86 and recompiling their stuff for uh, for Apple's new ARM processor. And that's what they've basically done because the uh, Apple's uh, system and ecosystem is much, much more closed wall, much more restricted then of course developers have done that because they really had no choice because the only Mac you could buy today if you went down to the shop was really an Apple uh, Silicon one, so you had to buy it and they've ported their code. Now to ease the migration though, Apple revived the same technology it used to migrate from PowerPC to x86 and now it's moved from x86 to ARM architecture and that's called Rosetta. It's Rosetta 2 now technically because it's for the x86 and Rosetta enables a Mac with Apple Silicon to run apps built for a Mac with an Intel processor. Many Mac OS apps are now universal or FAT which means they contain both codes so it's got the x86 code and the AR64 code and when you double click on it it knows which code to run because it knows which type of processor it has on board. Now of course Windows needs the same thing, it needs its own Rosetta technology which it already has but it doesn't have a fancy marketing name like Apple have gone so it's just called x86 emulation in Windows. So the ARM version of Windows 10 includes emulation technology that enables existing unmodified x86 apps to run on ARM devices, that's 32-bit apps, and Windows 11 extends that emulation to run unmodified x86-64 apps on ARM-powered devices. Which then brings us to this question, which is better, the x86 emulation on macOS or on Windows? Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of people just assume it's better on macOS. Uh, and there are lots of people who have probably were Mac fans and they were kind of sort of trash talking Windows saying, well, it's just rubbish, doesn't work, it's rubbish, doesn't work, it's rubbish, doesn't work. Apples is brilliant, Apples is great, Apples is fast, Apples is lovely. And I was replying in the comments, well, give me the proof for that. And of course, nobody, nobody, I like to mention this, nobody replied with any evidence that Mac OS is actually better than Windows. So I'm providing the evidence, so you can decide for yourselves. So testing can be tricky. Since many Mac OS apps are universal, if you just try to run that app, it will just run the native version. On Windows, there's generally still this idea, download a 32-bit version, download a 64-bit version, or download the, the ARM version. So you do get the option just to download that version. However, it is possible on Mac OS to force an app to run via Rosetta. However, two things seem to happen. If there was a library built into it that was an ARM library, even when you force it to use Rosetta, it uses the ARM library. And I've got not got a problem with that. That seems to make sense because if you're halfway through porting and some parts of your app are still x86, some parts are still ARM, you want it to use the ARM apps when it can. So I understand that. But also when there didn't seem to be any ARM, necessarily any ARM libraries that it should use, it could use the x86 one, it just still seemed to use the ARM one and so almost like Apple saying, well, actually, even though I'm running under Rosetta, uh, I'm going to run the ARM one because it will make it look good. And the result of that was, no, what testing I was doing with things like Geekbench, for example, or Firefox, I was getting near native speeds for the x86 versions compared to the ARM one. And I was thinking, wow, if people have been doing this testing, they may think that the x86 emulation is so good that it's almost as good as the native uh, version because look how fast it is, but actually it's not what was happening, it was still jumping into the ARM code somehow or another. So I decided to do some testing on my own uh, and actually make sure that Apple is running the x86 version and that Windows is running the x86 version when it's running on ARM based silicon. So I wrote my own code and compiled it, ensuring I was building x86 and AR64 versions independently on Windows and on Mac OS. So I would have four binaries, a Windows version for x86, a Windows version for ARM, a Mac version for x86, and a Mac version for ARM. I used a MacBook Air with an M1 processor, and I used the Windows Dev Kit 2023 codename project Volterra, of which I have a review of here on this channel here. And the aim was to see the difference in speed between the AR64 version, the native version, and the x86 version, not to compare the speed of the M1 
with the dev kit, for example, or an M2 with a dev kit or whatever. That's not the idea. The idea is how much slower is it under emulation? That was the question. So here is my first bit of code. So here we got, this is on Windows using the Project Volterra. So I've got ARM code and I've got x86. But amazingly, the x86 code is only 4% slower. And I can guarantee this is only x86 code because I compiled a binary with only x86 code. It's not a fat binary, not a universal binary. The binary I was running only had x86 code in it and it was 4% slower. So that's an amazing result there from Windows. In fact, when I ran the same code, compiled it, again, individual binaries on Mac OS, the x86 version on Mac OS was 38% slower. So from this initial test, any idea that Apple does it better just because it's Apple or Apple does it better because someone said so on some web page two years ago is clearly not true. OK, this is not not true. I've tested it myself with the hardware here, my own software. It's not true. However, just to make sure I didn't have a mistake in my own hardware, I also went on to use Handbrake. Now, Handbrake is the popular video encoding tool. I use the command line version and I use Apple's LiPo or LiPo tool to extract the architecture from a file. So when you have a universal architecture file, you can use this tool and say, get rid of all the ARM code or get rid of all the x86 code. And then you get left with a thin one, not a universal fat one, but a thin one. And I use that to make sure that I was only running x86 or ARM code. Nothing trying to force it with Rosetta. That's the only code that was available. Made sure I didn't use any hardware acceleration because obviously, for example, the Macs have got hardware acceleration built in so it can use the GPU and the video encoders. OK, or if I had a, a different GPU uh, for a Windows PC, it could use that as well. No hardware acceleration, just software based encoding. So this is a high level task, takes several minutes to run. We can see how well the CPUs do when emulating code. So here's the graph. We've got the native code on the left hand side. We've got the x86 emulator code on the right hand side and the Windows code is 2.2 times slower. So it basically took twice as long. So doing this very, very intensive CPU work, it took twice as long uh, under Windows. So obviously that means obviously native is better. We know that native is better and it can actually be a significant difference. Now, what's the difference on, our, on Mac? Now, if the Mac difference is only like 0.5 times slower or 0.5, 10, 0.1 times slower, then we can say, okay, I've got something wrong here, but look at this. On Mac, it was the same, 2.2 times slower. Okay, so 2.2 times slower, fair enough. Okay, on the uh, Windows code, two times slower on the uh, on the Mac OS. So again, if it took five minutes, it would take 10 minutes on the Mac OS. If it took five minutes on, on Windows, it would take 11 minutes or something. So, I mean, very, very close and still significant difference between the two in terms of emulated code and real code. So of course, we want native code. We want all the apps that are available for Windows to be native. We want all the apps that are available on Mac OS to be native. But let's steer away from this idea that somehow Mac OS is magic at this and it does so much of a better job because it's simply not true. Okay, so as with all benchmarking uh, software, different workloads highlight different things. So with my code, the Windows emulation was better. Maybe mine was more tighter loops that were running again and again and again. The handbrake, maybe different types of code paths, much longer uh, job that was running over several minutes. It was better. But in both cases, what we can say is they're very similar. There's not a remark difference in one or the other to say, wow, look at that. It's just clearly a different. They're both in the same ballpark because at the end of the day, they're both doing the same thing. And the people that wrote the code are pretty clever and they've done it the best they can. And the result is pretty good. So the Mac OS X86 emulation is just as good as the emulation in Windows. Or if you put on the other type of hat, the Windows x86-64 emulation is just as good as the emulation in Mac OS. Read it whichever way you want, but the truth is they're pretty much the same. Okay, so there you go. I'd love to hear what you think about all of this in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to this channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.